Hi everyone, welcome back to Nourishing Generations cooking class. I'm Ashley, your nutrition educator, and I'm so excited to be here again with Chef Sky. How's it going today, Chef Skyler? Hi, Chef Sky here. I'm doing great, Ashley. Happy to be here and ready to cook some really good food. Okay, so I'm really excited about today's class. We're gonna talk about eating the rainbow. Yes, how can you add more colorful foods to your diet? Well, we're gonna to learn today with a yummy recipe that has all kinds of colors. Now, colorful food helps to keep us healthy and it boosts the immune system so we don't get sick as often, which is really important. For example, oranges, carrots, foods that have that orange color are high in beta carotene. And this is specifically helps our immune system to stay healthy and keeps you from getting sick. Can anyone out there name all the colors of the rainbow or maybe just one or two? Well, let's name all the colors of the rainbow together. When we talk about colorful foods, we're talking about red, orange, yellow, green, blue and purple, and white. So why do you think it's so important to eat foods that are from all these different colors? That's right. Each color represents different vitamins, nutrients, antioxidants, all these really wonderful things that keep us healthy and happy. So we wanna make sure we eat a variety of colors throughout the day. A good rule of thumb is to eat five servings of fruits and vegetables and foods from the five different colors. So you can think one, two, three, four, five, eat something red, orange, yellow, green, maybe blue or purple and white. That way you'll make sure you're getting plenty of great nutrients for the day. So Chef Skylar, I think we're ready to get started. What is our wonderful rainbow food recipe today? Well, everyone, today's recipe is a rainbow frittata. It's gonna incorporate all sorts of different veggies and it's a dish which is healthy and excellent at all times of the day for breakfast, for a snack. And we're gonna get to learn some new techniques today. And we're gonna get to use some ingredients that you might not be familiar with. So I'm really excited to cook this with you. You may remember the first thing that we do whenever we're cooking is we wash our hands. And when we're baking, which we're going to do today, this is going to go into the oven, we also have to preheat our ovens. So before we do anything else, let's all go wash our hands and turn our ovens on to 350 degrees. If you need, uh, you can ask an adult for help to turn on the oven, or if you're in a classroom, your teacher might turn it on for you. But let's all go ahead and preheat our ovens to 350 degrees and wash our hands. Remember, we wash our hands for 20 whole seconds. That means singing the happy birthday song or some other similar song twice. And we'll meet back here and I'll give you a minute to do that. All right, everybody washed up and have their ovens preheated? Good, we're ready to go. So. The other first thing that we do is we make sure we have all our ingredients and all our equipment ready before we start cooking. You remember the word for that? Bonus points if you do. It was mise en place. That means everything in its place. So let's talk about what we're gonna need today. Equipment, we don't need very much today. What we need is a cutting board and a knife. You probably have a smaller knife and that's okay. You don't need a big one like mine. You'll also need measuring spoons and measuring cups. We also need a cheese grater like this. We're gonna need a bowl and a fork to mix our eggs in. And then you need a pan that can go in the oven. You don't want one that's too big. I like one like this. This one has a handle. You don't need to have a handle on yours either. Any type of small baking pan will be fine for this recipe. That's it for the equipment. Now let's talk about the ingredients we're gonna need for the recipe. Well, this recipe has lots of veggies in it. So let's talk about the veggies we're gonna be using. I've got red onions. I've got bell peppers. I've got fresh herbs, carrots. I've got greens of different kinds, which I'll talk about a little bit later. We're also gonna need 
our cheese, right? We can use any sort of cheese that melts will be fine. Some of the best ones are jack cheese or cheddar cheese. You could even use mozzarella or Parmesan. Any cheese that melts will be fine on top of this. And then we need either butter or pan spray, which you might have in your cupboard, uh, to grease our pan so the eggs don't stick to the pan when we're cooking it. Finally, we need our eggs. The recipe calls for six eggs, but six eggs makes a very big frittata. So today I'm going to cut the recipe in half and only use three eggs, which is still a pretty big frittata. So it'll fill me up and uh, it might even fill up someone else as well. Now, the thing to remember when we're cutting a recipe in half like that is that you've got to cut all the other ingredients in half too. So if it calls for one cup of milk with six eggs, if we're only going to use three eggs, well, we would cut that cup of milk in half and use half a cup of milk instead. So we're going to do that with the recipe today and hopefully you can follow along at home. The last thing is a little bit of salt and pepper for seasoning. The first step that we're going to do for this recipe is using our grater. That's the thing that looks like this. Last time we talked a bit about safety with the grater. Just to remind you, the main thing to watch out for are your fingernails. If your fingernails get stuck in the grater, that is going to hurt. But if you're very careful and you pay attention to those fingernails, keep them in, you should be okay. What we're going to be grating is our cheese and our carrot. So let's take a look at how to do that. The first thing to do when grating is to get our vegetable or whatever we're grating into a size that's easy to use. So a big carrot like this is going to be difficult. So you can go ahead and you could use your knife or even your finger to just break it and you'll get a little piece like this. And that's all we really need for the frittata. We don't need much. I'm going to do the same thing with the cheese. I'm going to cut it into a piece that looks about right for our for grating. We'll review knife safety later, but you can always watch me and you'll see that I'm always using those safety techniques that we talked about. Now, just to go over the grating again, you're watching your fingernails, keeping them in, okay? Take this, leave plenty of space between your fingers and the grater and just gently go ahead and run it along the grater like this. You can go ahead and do your whole piece of cheese there. Now remember, I cut the recipe in half, so if you're doing the whole recipe, you're going to have more cheese than I have. But this is the part where you want to be real careful right at the end, okay? Go slow. See how slow I'm going? And if there's a little bit left like that, that's okay, you can eat that piece. Let's put our cheese aside. And we'll do the same thing with our carrots, with our, our carrot. If it gets too close like that on one side, turn it, see? Create more space and that's safer. That's a good amount of carrot right there. Probably some in here too. Great. And now we've got our carrots and our cheese ready to go. So we can put those aside for later because first we're going to get all our other ingredients together and then we can assemble it all and put it in the oven. Okay, now that we've cleaned up and we've put our cheese and our carrots aside, we're going to go on to the next step, which is beating our eggs. Now there are just a couple of things to remember when beating your eggs and I will show those to you now. So for this part, we'll need our bowl, our fork, and our eggs. First thing we're gonna do is take the egg in one hand and just tap it gently against the side of the bowl until it cracks, and then you use your fingers to open it up the rest of the way. Now you wanna be careful to try not to get shells in there, but if you do, it's okay, it's no big deal. I'll show you how to fix it. Say a piece of shell comes off and falls in like that. If you try to get it with your fingers, 
uh, it's very difficult to pull out because of the eggs. Watch this trick. Take this half of a shell, scoop it, and it comes right out. See that? Let's finish up our last egg. Nice little crack. Fingers open it up, and there you go. These eggshells can be composted. They make very nutritional compost. You take the fork and you just mix the eggs all together. There's really no trick to it. Just smoosh them all together, mix it and swirl it. Don't be too messy. Try to keep it in the bowl, but you just want to get them so they're all nice and just beaten together like that. Just like you would for scrambled eggs, okay? And then we're done with those. This is a good time to add a little bit of salt and pepper. So I'm going to do that now. Just take a little pinch of salt and a few little grates of pepper and mix those in there. Now we can go ahead and set this aside for later. But there's one other important thing to remember, and that's that eggs are, are a protein and they come from animals. And that means that they have a danger for what's called cross-contamination. Now, I don't expect you, you don't need to remember that word, but you need to remember one thing that's important for safety. If you use eggs or meat, any sort of animal protein like that, you cannot cut vegetables on the same cutting board afterwards. Because if there's a bit of egg on your cutting board, like there is here, and that touches the raw vegetable, that can make you or whoever eats your food very sick. Okay, chefs, so before we chop our vegetables, let's talk more about the colors of the rainbow foods and all the nutrients that we find in those. So for red foods, you're gonna use foods like cherries, watermelon, strawberries, tomatoes, and then there's vegetables that are red like beets, radish, and red bell pepper. What's so great about red foods? They're high in a vitamin called lycopene. It's an antioxidant, so that's really good for your heart. And it also has vitamin C, what keeps your immune system strong, and it will keep you healthy. Next, we have orange foods. These include oranges, of course, cantaloupes, mangoes, peach, and even vegetables like carrots, squash, pumpkin, and sweet potato. We also have yellow foods like bananas, pineapples, lemon, avocados, which is a fruit, and then veggies like corn, bell peppers, which can be yellow, onions, squash, and even some other vegetables that are yellow like spaghetti squash and things like that. So what's great about orange and yellow vegetables is they both tend to be high in beta carotene again. This is good for your vision and it also helps keep our lungs healthy and it will help to prevent cancers as well. They're high in vitamin C, which might help fight against colds and flus and it protects our cells. The next color and probably my favorite are green fruits and vegetables. Green fruits can be grapes, honeydew, melon, kiwi, that's a great one, limes, and then there's vegetables like green beans, lettuce, and other leafy greens, celery, spinach, and even sea vegetables like seaweed is really great for you as well. So what's so great about these green foods? Well, let me tell you. They're actually high in calcium, which helps you grow big and strong and protects our bones and makes them nice and strong. What's great about them is that they help us stay focused and give us a little more energy. So we wanna to try to eat lots of green foods whenever possible. The next color is purple or blue foods. Some foods kind of fall in between and there's a nice array of purple and blue foods out there like blueberries, figs, plums, raisins, eggplant, potatoes, and even purple cabbage. These tend to be very high in antioxidants. Antioxidants are a special nutrient that helps combat cancer and helps with anti-aging and keeping our cells in the inside of our body nice and healthy. Now the last color is white. Sometimes we don't think about white as a rainbow color, but in foods we include white in talking about the rainbow. These are gonna be foods like bananas, apples, cauliflower, jicama, one of my favorites, potatoes, white beans, and even mushrooms could fall into this white category. And so what do we love about white foods? Well, for example, bananas are really high in potassium, which is good for our heart health. 
and also helps with our muscles recovering after exercise. So it's good to eat before or after exercise. Now, apples and onions in the white category are also high in something called quercetin. And this is a really great nutrient that helps support our immune system and it reduces inflammation, specifically the histamine response. So if you have an allergy or um, have allergies in the springtime, the quercetin type foods can help calm down some of that histamine response. All right, so that's the quick information on the nutritional value of all our rainbow foods. Let's head back to Chef Skyler and see if we're ready to chop those veggies. What's next, Chef? Now that we've learned a bit about all the different colored veggies, we're gonna use some of them and we're gonna chop them up and assemble our frittatas. So, if you remember from earlier, we have all sorts of different veggies here, right? We've got bell pepper, we've got red onion, we've got fresh herbs, greens even. So, we're gonna take a bit of each of these and we're gonna chop them up and then we get to put it all together with our eggs in the pan and put it in the oven. But First, remember the two important things we talked about last time for knife safety. The two most important things are that you keep your claw on your left hand, or if you're left-handed, your other hand, but on your off hand, you keep your claw so that your fingers are not pointed out when you're grabbing your vegetable, right? So you look like this, not like this. And then with your other hand, remember how you hold your knife? You take your finger and put it under. Your thumb pinches it like this, okay? Then these three fingers wrap around the blade and that's how you hold your knife, okay? If you keep your claw and you hold it like that and you push away from yourself when you're cutting, you'll be pretty safe. You still have to be very careful, move slowly, but if you keep those things in mind, you'll be safe. So here we've got all of our veggies laid out, ready to chop, right? Let's start going at it. Let's go ahead and do the bell pepper first. Okay, so the first thing about a bell pepper, if you remember from last time, we don't want a, a round veggie that can roll while we're chopping it. So we have to cut it in half by grabbing it with our fingers like this, putting the knife in between, and cutting it in half. Okay, with a bell pepper we need to remove the seeds, so I'm going to do that now. They come out very easily, see, just knocked them out in the garbage can, that's all. You can compost those as well. They're very nutritious actually for the earth or for animals. With a bell pepper, now we've got a flat thing that we can cut like this, right? We don't need much. I've got, the recipe calls for a half of a cup, but remember I'm cutting the recipe in half, so I've got a quarter of a cup. And you can see it's a pretty small cup, so that's how much bell pepper I want. I'm gonna go ahead and cut some strips of bell pepper with my knife. See how I'm using my claw on my left hand? And you can see the way I'm holding with my right hand, just as I taught you earlier. I think that's gonna be enough bell pepper right there. Maybe one more. And then we take our strips that we've made. And look, we cut them into little squares like this, okay? You don't have to go as fast as me. You can take your time. But you want nice little squares like that. If you want to challenge yourself, you can put two of them next to each other like this, okay? And you can chop a few more squares. So I'm gonna finish that up. You go ahead and take your time. You don't have to go as fast as me. Once we've got our bell peppers all chopped up into nice little squares, let's put them aside. You can put them on, on the table or on the side of the cutting board. I've got a little plate here which I'm putting them on that's next to me. Now go ahead and take your time with those bell peppers. And when you're ready, we'll go on to the next vegetable, which will be the onion. When you're chopping the onion, you have the same situation as before, where it'll roll around if you don't make it flat. You know what to do, right? We tag it by the sides, we put our knife in between, and we cut it right in half. And look at that, flat surface, right? Now we're not in danger of cutting ourselves. With an onion, you need to remove the skin. The way I like to do it 
is by taking the front and the back off. You may already have an onion that's this is already done for you, but if not, that's how you get it down to the point where it's nice and everything is edible. The onion skin can be put aside and it can be put into compost or it can be put into a pot with water and other veggies and made into veggie broth. Now onion has a very strong flavor, so I'm just going to do a few very thin slices of onion. I'm actually going to go this direction with it. Notice my claw? Very thin slices here is how I'm going to do this. Because if I put big pieces of onion in my frittata, it's going to overpower all the other flavors. So just do a few slices of, of the onion like that. And if you don't like onion, you don't have to put it in there. That's one of the beautiful things about a recipe like this is that you can use whatever veggies you find in your fridge or whatever veggies that you like. Our recipe calls for certain vegetables, but if you don't like those vegetables and you like other things, you can put whatever you want in here and eat it. So the next thing that we're gonna chop up is going to be our greens. There are a few different kinds of greens you might use. You might use small leafy greens like this, something like spinach or baby kale. Those can just be torn up a little bit and they can go in just like that. There's no need to really do anything else because they're edible and delicious. But if you have a bigger leafy green, something like chard, which is what this is, or collard greens, then it's got this big stem in the middle. You need to take that part out. So it's very easy. You just grab it down here at the bottom and pull it right off. See? Now you've got this, the greens, which is what you want to eat. You can cut those any which way you like because greens cook down quite a bit. So they're going to become much smaller. This big amount, once it cooks, it's going to shrink, 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 shrink. It's going to be much less. So it looks like a lot, but it's really not too much. I'm going to put that on my plate and I'm going to use both of those greens, the, uh, the baby kale and the Swiss chard. Finally, we're going to use fresh herbs. Here, I've got some fresh organic cilantro, which is my favorite herb. But you could use parsley. Uh, last week, we, earned, we learned about oregano and we used fresh basil. So you could use those as well if you liked those. Any sort of herbs that you have around, you can put in here and it's only going to add more flavor. Let's try it with some cilantro today. Now the recipe only calls for one to two tablespoons of herbs. So I don't want to put too much. Here I've got my tablespoon measure and since I'm cutting the recipe in half, I'm going to do one tablespoon, not even quite full. And that's going to go into my recipe. So here we've got a beautiful assortment of veggies and herbs that are all chopped up and they are ready to go into our recipe. We've got our eggs that we prepared earlier. We've also got our grated carrots and cheese. Those I've set aside as well. And now we're gonna to get to combine it all into our pan and we're gonna to get to put it in the oven. Now we are ready to assemble our frittatas. We've got our chopped veggies. We've got our grated carrot and cheese. I've got my butter here to grease my pan. I've also got a couple of optional ingredients that I'm going to add. I've got goat cheese and I've got milk. If your stomach doesn't do well with milk, you can use any other sort of milk like almond milk or soy milk or hemp milk. And these optional ingredients, I'm choosing to add them because I like the way that they taste. But you do not have to add them. The recipe will still be very good without them. So. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to grease our pan. If you've got butter like I do, you're going to simply rub it all over the pan. If you've got spray, that's easier. You just spray a thin layer around the pan. But the idea is that we don't want our eggs to stick to the pan. So we've got a nice thin layer of that going. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add all of our vegetables. So I'm just going to take my plate of veggies here and spread these all around in there. Get 
every little bit in there. And we want to mix them together so that you're not getting one bite with only onion and one bite with only pepper. Mix those all together. Spread the carrots over the top. Not the cheese, just the carrots. And then, you guessed it, we add our eggs. Add all of the egg mixture in there. And I'm gonna add my milk. I'm gonna use my fork to mix that around. Very good. You want to kind of flatten it out, right? So the veggies aren't sticking too far out the top so that it bakes together nicely. So after you've added your eggs and your veggies, it should look like this with a good layer of eggs over the top, but you can still see the veggies. Now is when we're going to add our cheese. If you're adding goat cheese like I am, now is a good time to do that. You don't want too much, just a little bit spread out here and there. I think that's, that looks like enough. And then we've got our melty cheese. So we're gonna take all that melty cheese and sprinkle it all over, right over the top of our frittata. And that is ready to go in the oven. A little special twist is to do some fresh black pepper right on top, so I'm gonna do that. And that kind of makes it seem a little bit more fancy. So maybe if you decide to do this and cook this for someone else, you can put the black pepper on top and make it seem extra fancy. Now, we've got our ovens preheated to 350 degrees and we are ready to put it in the oven. When we put it in, we're gonna set a timer for 15 minutes and we're gonna check it after 15 minutes. The recipe says cook for 15 to 20, so that means we check it after 15 minutes and we see if it's done. It might be done or it might need another five minutes. So let's go ahead and put it in the oven now and set your timer for 15 minutes. Okay, chefs, great. Now that's in the oven. Let's get up and get moving. It's time for a fun fitness activity. Let's see what Holly has in store for us today. Hi, kids. It's me, Holly Caliero, back for more physical activity fun. Now, just in case you don't remember me from last week, I'm the physical activity educator here at Nourishing Generations. And today, you're gonna be learning about muscles what they are, how they work, and how you can build strong ones. We've been lucky enough today to have muscle expert Millie Muscle Fluff join us. Millie's gonna help me out by teaching you all a little bit about muscles. Thank you, Millie. Good afternoon, children. I'm Millie Muscle Fluff, researcher and muscle expert. And I am here today to talk to you about muscles. What is muscle? Muscle is a tissue that expands and contracts, much like this rubber band. The function of this tissue is to produce motion. Your body contains more than one type of muscle, voluntary and involuntary. Voluntary muscles are muscles that you control. For example, using your arm to throw a ball. Involuntary muscles are muscles that work on their own. For example, your heart pumping in your chest. Today, we'll be talking specifically about skeletal muscles. Skeletal muscles are voluntary. They only move when you want them to. Skeletal muscles are generally attached to your skeleton, hence the name skeletal muscles. These are the muscles that show how strong you are and allow you to do physical activity. These muscles come in all shapes and sizes, depending on the job they are needed for. They are held to your bones with tendons, strong cord-like tissue that attach strongly enough that your bones move when your muscles expand and contract. Muscles are made to move, and in order to keep them healthy, we need to move and exercise them so they are strong. The best way to make sure we have strong muscles is to do lots of different types of physical activity. This will help exercise all the muscle groups we have. Other ways to build strong muscles 
are to eat lots of protein, healthy whole grains, and root vegetables. Protein is a major building block for your muscles. Good sources of protein include nuts, like almonds, walnuts, cashews, seeds, like pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, and sunflower seeds, eggs, milk, cheese, yogurt, chicken, beef, pork, and lamb. Whole grains and root vegetables are healthy sources of quick energy, which help to power our muscles during exercise. Examples of these include whole wheat, brown rice, oatmeal, corn, potatoes, sweet potatoes, beets, carrots, parsnips, rutabagas, and turnips. Okay, children, I hope you enjoyed this talk and learned a few new facts about muscles. Thank you. Hey kids, it's me, Holly, again. I hope you're all ready for some physical activity today. We're gonna be doing a little something I like to call repeaty peeps. Hope you can keep up. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna give you some commands and you're gonna do your best to follow along. Let's go. Run, run, run. Shake, shake, shake. Flap your wings. Do a crazy thing. Wash and wax. Then repeat all of that. Run, run, run. Shake, shake, shake. Flap your wings. Do a crazy thing. Bend your knees. Then turn your head. Roll your shoulders. Then knead the bread. Reach for the sky. Reach real, real high. Walk like a crab. Then hail a cap. Squat and stand. Then begin all over again. Run, run, run. Shake, shake, shake. Flap your wings. Do a crazy thing. Bend your knees. Then turn your head. Roll your shoulders. Then knead the bread. Reach for the sky. Reach real, real high. Walk like a crab. Then hail a cab. Hop, hop, hop. Skip, skip, skip. Lift your knees. Pretend to be trees. Now tap your toes. Then touch your nose. Do a silly dance. your pants. Wash and wax. Then repeat all of that. Run, run, run. Shake, shake, shake. Flap your wings. Do a crazy thing. Bend your knees. Then turn Need the bread. Reach for the sky. Reach real, real high. Walk like a crab. Then hail a cab. Hop, hop, hop. Skip, skip, skip. Lift your knees. Pretend to be trees. Now tap your toes. Then touch your nose. 
do a silly dance. Then wiggle your pants. Okay, kids. Thanks so much for participating with me. I hope you enjoyed repeaties. You take good care and I hope you have a wonderful, active week. Wow, that was great, guys. Way to get moving with Holly. All right, back to the kitchen, Chef Sky. Is that frittata ready? Now that our timer's gone off, let's go ahead and pull our frittata out of the oven and check if it's ready. Here I've got a hot pad ready to go so that when I pull my hot pan out, I'll have someplace safe to put it. Now look at that frittata. That is beautiful. You see it's all nice and melted across the top. You can also see here, right around the edge, it's starting to pull away from the pan a little bit. And that's how we know it's done. If you jiggle it, it doesn't look like raw egg in the center. You can even put your knife in it and you see that it comes out nice and clean. That's a nicely fully cooked frittata. So let's go ahead and pull it out of the pan and taste it. You're gonna to wanna to have a plate ready to go and you can even use a spatula to help you. I'm gonna start with this knife by going around the edge. It should come off very easily because we greased our pan earlier with the butter or with the spray. And then I'm gonna use my spatula. See how I'm careful to use a hot pad when I pick up the hot pan. You should remember that. And I'm gonna use the spatula to pull it out of here. Look at that. So now that we've pulled it out of the pan, it's time to taste our food. Wow, look at the colors all in there. That is beautiful. It's a little bit hot, so be careful. Mm. Okay kids, while you enjoy that nice rainbow frittata, let's recap what we learned today. Today we talked about rainbow foods. Yes, let's try to eat as many different colors of foods as we can every day. What are those rainbow colors again? Do you remember? Our rainbow food colors are red, orange, yellow, green, blue and purple, and white. So there's six different colors or groups of colors to think about. Try to eat how many servings a day? at least five if you get 10 bonus points. So try to eat an orange, a red, a blue, a green, a white, a purple. Throughout the day, mix those colors into all your different meals. And why do we wanna eat so many different colors all day long? That's right, because they're all gonna have some different nutrients in there. So it's gonna give our a variety of nutrition that'll keep us healthy, keep our brain focused, and keep us healthy with a nice, strong immune system so we don't get sick as often. I had a great time cooking with you all today, and I hope you had some fun as well. I really hope you enjoy your frittata, and I hope that you try to cook like this at home, using all the different colors of the rainbow and trying to pack as much nutrients into your food as possible. It's really delicious, and it's really nutritious and I'm really looking forward to seeing you again next time. Well, chefs, you did so great today. From me, Ashley, Chef Sky, and Holly, thanks for joining the Nourishing Generations cooking class. We loved having you, and we loved learning about rainbow foods and this yummy recipe with Chef Sky. We included some handouts and other activities if you wanna do those after class, and we hope you join us back next time and see what we're cooking in the kitchen. Thanks, everybody. See you soon.